All right, it's Super Bowl week, so uh, we decided to come out here to Ironwood and talk to a guy who played in the Super Bowl. I've covered six, but I've never played in one, as, as, as far as we know. But Mike Bass, who of course is a Ranger out here, you may know him from that, but you know him from a famous Super Bowl play. But first of all, Mike, just talking about the difference in the Super Bowl now versus back then, because it was, you didn't have 85 media days and everything like that. What was it like playing that? At the time, it wasn't even called the Super Bowl, if I recall. But we uh, we played the Dolphins, who really have gone through the season undefeated right now. And uh, at that point, it was still just another, just another game. But uh, what made the difference was the fact that uh, we were favored to win. And over an undefeated team. Over an undefeated <laughs> team, that's right. Uh, and. I think our coach, George Allen, was just as nervous as a lot of the players. But uh, you never can, especially going to the Super Bowl the first time, you never can get accustomed to the hype around it. We thought it was just another game, but quite frankly, it wasn't. Right. And it was, obviously, you guys did a great job defensively of containing that great, uh, obviously, you had Zonka, Kick, and Mercury Morris, and those guys holding the 14 points, but your offense with Billy Kilmer just couldn't get it going. No, no, they, our offense had a, a rough time, and we had a bunch of uh, veteran players, but the coaches didn't make the changes yeah, at half time that we all thought should have been made. Uh, and if you hold a team with 14 points, you're supposed to win, especially uh, at that time, but unfortunately, we didn't. And then we came in second. Nobody ever remembers the second place team. No, but what they do remember is how you scored your only touchdown. Because uh, if you guys have seen it a million times, and this kick is blocked. Your premium has it. <laughs> Throws a pass up for the ball. It's Mike Bass. He's running away for a touchdown. Mike Bass scores! What a kooky play that was. Gary Yepremian lost his head and tried to throw a pass. Grabs it, <laughs> tried to throw a pass, and hit his arm, and ended up in Mike Bass's hand, and he ran 49 yards for a touchdown. At the time, there's still two minutes to go, and you're thinking, hey, we still can win this game. Right? Yeah. I actually had dreams about what I could have done in those last two minutes. And, uh, I remember Greasy throwing a short out, which they called a shot, uh, to one of the receivers. And if I had taken a chance, who knows, maybe we could have turned him around. But it's ironic uh, with Gero, who we lost a couple of years ago. He and I were on the, uh, the cap squad in Detroit with the Lions prior to. Uh, my going to Washington and his going to, uh, to Miami. Uh, and we left the same year. And we used to play catch <laughs> in Detroit. Maybe you saw it too on purpose. <laughs> uh, he, he was a great guy, a great kicker, a, a real personality. And we uh, had done a number of engagements together down through the years. Uh, I, I do miss him. We used to get together at least once or twice a year, uh, and it was always, always great fun. He was a character, and uh, we were sort of joined at the hip, so to speak, yeah, absolutely. forever, because that play took place almost 50 years ago. When you talk about being the only winner of the losers in the NFL. You, got, you call that your loser's ring? I call it my loser's ring. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm very proud of it. It cost me a, a lot in terms of uh, operations and things of that sort. Uh, and I am very, very proud of it. But still, it's the second place ring. Uh, and, and nobody remembers who finishes in second place. Well, I did. <laughs> um, also, you know, I will always wonder what that locker room was like after the game. This was like if you played the unbeaten team as close as you can play them, and, and just to come so close. Well, a lot of times uh, when it is that close, games turn on one or two or three plays. In this particular instance, 
we all knew that our offense did not uh, come through, but there was, we were a bunch of uh, veterans. Coach, uh, Coach Allen uh, really didn't want anybody under 30. And so we were known as the, the over the hill guy. But because we were all veteran players, his thought was let some other team train them and then he'd bring them here because his defenses in particular were uh, so sophisticated that uh, you really had to have spent five, six, seven years in the league in order to really uh, uh, grasp how it all worked together. And, and that was a benefit to having a veteran team. I feel very, uh, very serious about the fact that uh, as a pro, you respect other pros. And so one of the things that bothers me a bit, and a lot of players who played during my era, uh, are the antics that go on after touchdown and score. In my opinion, that kind of belittles another pro. And I don't think it's necessary. And Coach Lombardi used to say, when you get into the end zone, act like you've been there before. Right. Sometimes I wonder if any of them have been there. You're right about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, you're now, right. I, I did a little bit of research. I found something that a lot of people don't know. But this man was in two movies. <laughs> he was in Paper Lion, which is a great movie if you've never seen it. Alan Aldo, uh, George Clinton's book. It's a great book as well. And the legendary Brotherhood of Death. Well, those are so, that, no, that movie is one I'd like to forget. <laughs> uh, it, was a, it was my... Uh, I guess my second attempt at acting, so I know as you get older, you know what you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, he, for those of you who don't know, uh, Mike Bass went to the Bahamas for a long time. How long were you there? Uh, after I retired, I moved to the Bahamas and I was there for 18 years. So, how did you end up? You know, I know you wanted to get your, your children, your daughters, back to the United States and let them grow up here, but how did you pick Gainesville? Well, uh, several years before, my sister uh, was in a play. She did some work on Broadway, and she was in a play in at the Hippodrome. Yeah. And uh, she actually was very enthusiastic about Gainesville, and it too was much like Ann Arbor, where I went to school at the University of Michigan. And so uh, I liked college towns, and this we call a big small town, so to speak. And both of my daughters, uh, Kimberly and Louise, grew up here in Gainesville and uh, went to Eastside. And uh, when I left the Bahamas, I still had business interests there. And so this was, uh, gave me the ability to go back and forth, which I did for several years. Uh, then I took a position at the University of Florida. Uh, for five years. So I've been here really nearly 20 years. And it's been great. I, I work here at Ironwood. I'm a ranger. And I enjoy it because it gets me out of the house. And there's just a bunch of great guys that I, that I associate with. Who, who, uh, we all play together. And they're so much better than me at golf. But I Come enjoy on. I enjoy the the experience. Did you ever think about getting into coaching? No, no, not at all. Seen enough of it. Yeah, <laughs> coaching is a 26-hour-a-day job, and the first I played for 10 years, and the first five years were it was just a lot of fun. The second five years it was a job, and going into coaching, coaching it would have been even more. Uh, strenuous, so to speak. I love watching football. I'm a real football fan. There are a number of players around here that, that uh, play professionally. And I see Ricky McKeel every now and then, who uh, was a great receiver with Denver. Right. Uh, now, this is, a, as I said, a, a big, small town. And uh, I really, I'm really glad that I set up here. Gonna ask them. Florida played Michigan. Who are you root for in that? I I have to be honest. I was rooting for Michigan.
because we have a alma mater. Right. But we had a history of beating Florida every <laughs> other time. So maybe uh, the odds <laughs> kind of caught up yeah. with, with Michigan. It probably didn't bother you that much in Florida. Uh, no, no, it, it actually didn't. It actually didn't. Uh, but I'd like to see Michigan back on top again to the point where they're challenging the teams uh, for the national championship. But uh, Florida seems to be improving every year, and uh, they've got a great nucleus. So let's hope that uh, they end up uh, a lot better than they have in the past few years. All right, before we let him go, we've got to see, find out who my best former Super Bowl player thinks is going to win Super Bowl, what is it, 53 this year? Yeah. 53 in Atlanta. Yeah. Well, uh, again, I appreciate pros and perfection, and my wife and I don't particularly, uh, particularly my wife, doesn't particularly care for uh, Brady. But I appreciate his right. professionalism right. down through the years. And greatness is made over a period of time. And uh, I actually pick, uh, pick the Patriots. I grew up a Rams fan, so you know I feel. <laughs> but uh, I, it, I, I'm the, with him. I'm, it's kind of like with some, you have to sit there. Like, you don't have to like Belichick. Right. But you, if you don't think he's a brilliant coach, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not fantastic. You, you, you couldn't, he couldn't have done what he's done year in and year out with changing personnel uh, and not be considered among the great coaches. The greatest of coaches. You played for two of the best? Uh, I, I think so. Uh, Coach Allen and, and Vince Lombardi, I don't think you can get any better than that unless it's gone true. <laughs> I think I covered a game with George Allen in the U.S. Mm-hmm. He went over there. I'm he trying was, to remember whether I did or not. I covered the USFL one too. Well, he was an eccentric. He, he was, was one of those guys who who would tell the offense, okay, offense, go in and hold them. <laughs> because he uh, he loved the defense. Right. He loved the defense. That was his mantra. All right, that's going to do it for our latest video cast. Uh, we thank Kyle for taking this. And great pleasure to talk to my man right here, Mike Bass. We see him out here all the time. And uh, come on out to Ironwood if you want to. Talk to him some more. I'm sure he wouldn't mind sharing some memories with you. Till next time, Pat Dooley, the Gainesville Sun, saying so long from Iron Golf. Club.